Pratt Family Homestead. Here we are, back in the pantry. Talk to you about storing your lard. We get asked a lot, kind of, not, not real frequently, but we do get asked, how do you guys store your lard? Or uh, do you freeze it? Do you just put it on the shelf? And then, you know, scrolling through a lot of Facebook groups, sometimes I'll see people are like, oh, I only store my lard in the fridge, my opened lard in the fridge. And I... Then I bring it out to use it for the cooking or whatever and put it back in the fridge. So we're going to discuss how to store your lard today. Or do you need to refrigerate your lard at all? Now we do have a video from like three years ago of our very first time ever rendering lard. And you can watch that right there. I actually kind of forget what's in that video to tell you the truth. But uh, it'll show you what we, what we did. And that's basically what we do nowadays too. Okay, if you want to get out of here, you want to split right now, yes, lard is shelf stable. You don't need to freeze it. You don't need to uh, keep it in your fridge. You don't need to do any of that. As you can see, we have it right there. And if you've seen our pantry tour videos, you'll see that uh, we have a lot of lard up there. I'll go show it to you. We also have more here. Granted, in the wintertime, this pantry stays cold. It stays colder than I would like it to be. But uh, it is what it is. Um, but it also gets extremely warm in here in the summer. Warmer than I would like it to be too. It's not the ideal spot for storing canned goods because of the temperature fluctuations. But that aside, uh, we do keep our lard on the shelf and um, we keep a jar on the stove. We usually have a, we also usually have a jar of bacon grease on the stove. None of it ever gets refrigerated. A lot of things that I've read said, you know, shelf stable for a year, shelf stable for, you know, 18 months, shelf stable for 10 months, whatever. We have jars up there that are years old, probably, hmm, maybe not. As I say, I think we have jars left over from that first time we can still, but I doubt that we do, or not that we can't, I'm sorry. Jars left over from the first time we rendered lard. So the next question is, do you can your lard? Do you pressure can it? You can find lots of guides on the internet to pressure can your lard. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Um, the whole process of rendering your lard is taking the impurities out of it. The meat chunks, the whatever, the, the other solids that could potentially spoil. That's the whole process of rendering your lard. So our process for canning uh, the lard is we just have the hot jars we pour the hot lard in there and then we put the lid and ring on and we let it self seal uh, and that is it that is how we keep it on the shelf now don't get me wrong if you want to keep your lard in the freezer by all means there's nothing wrong with that either there's nothing wrong with storing it in the freezer um, I haven't read anything that it degrades the lard or anything like that I have not read anything to that effect uh, but if you're like me and you're always trying to get stuff out of the freezer and get it up onto the shelves, then why store your lard in the freezer? So let's take a look at this lard on the shelf for starters. Oh, I also encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and go over to the community tab on there. We have a poll up about how people store their lard. I encourage you to go check that out. There's almost 200 votes on that poll right now. But up here we have our lard. And here is some lard that we just rendered this year. Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. Here's some lard from uh, 2017 that we still have. So I had the 2020 there, 2017 over there. Beautiful. There's nothing wrong with this. This is our next jar to open right here to use. I actually cannot believe that we have lard from 2017. If we move over to here... This is actually, I cannot remember the name of it. You all will correct me, or not correct me, but you all will uh, let me know. This is duck fat, rendered duck fat that my buddy John over at our Hodgepodge Homestead gave us. And then next to it over there is leaf lard that I rendered this year. I finally got all the lard out of the freezer. I don't think we've ever had all of the lard the unrendered lard. I don't think we've ever had it all out of the freezer since we ever started doing pigs. Uh, so we have taken the, the frozen, I guess, raw lard out of the... Uh, we usually put it in the freezer until we get to it when we get our uh, pork back from the butcher. Which, we'll be doing our own pigs this year, I'm pretty sure. Uh, 
and then and then later when we have time or it's convenient for us we then render it down and we finally have no more raw unrendered lard in the freezer none at all it's all up on the shelf so that's awesome each of these i believe is about three deep uh the end one might be too deep that's a lot of lard and like i said we keep it right here on our stove we don't hassle with putting it in the fridge or nothing in fact with all the cooking and the canning and everything else that, that on the stove actually stays more in a liquid state more often than a solid state but the stove has not been on here too recently but this is actually still liquid from some cooking we did a little earlier uh, we even usually have two or three jars on the uh, stove one would be bacon grease we'll keep it right there and we've had bacon grease before be on the stove for a long time uh, then sometimes uh, if we have extra I don't know like Jenny has fried something in some lard or something uh, we'll pour that off and that'll sit on the stove as well until it gets reused for something or we decide we don't want to use it anymore also before we get started I wanted to point out that for years decades they've been telling us how awful lard is for us and we need to go to vegetable oils and this or that um, that is getting debunked more and more and more. You can Google, do your own research on it. But I was so impressed the other night, uh, Jenny and I were watching a, uh, a cooking show on PBS. I believe it was called Country Cook. Uh, but they actually had an episode on lard and I loved hearing those chefs say, uh, you know, it used to be thought that you had to use canola, vegetable oil, or something not to use lard and they they even said that has been debunked and i loved hearing that because you need to do your own research but you need to go back to cooking with some lard granted i would give you i've seen charts of uh different levels of this or that and different different uh oils olive oils compared to lard and uh canola compared to lard and all this so all of them have their whatever's more of this more of that but do your research I'm not gonna go into the whole oils thing. I'm not gonna do it. I'll let you guys research and you guys figure it out. This is about storing lard. <laughs> now, as far as fats and stuff go, I am also a butter fanatic. I cannot wait until we get a milking cow. Oh, have our own, own homemade butter. We do get goat's milk, um, but we only get about a quart of goat's milk a day and trying to save that up for butter and the amount of butter we use, that's not happening. So we just enjoy the goat's milk and one day we'll have a milking cow and I'll have homemade butter as well. Although we have made homemade butter before, uh, it'll be just nice to have it on hand all the time. So, hey, we also have eggs. We have homegrown eggs, homegrown, home rendered lard, some store-bought bought butter, but let's make some eggs real quick. Also, while we're waiting for that, that pan to warm up before we fry up some eggs, oh, now I'm starving, I want a couple of eggs. I got two eggs out, but I gotta tell you, I think I went three or four, but we're also really close to dinner time, so I'm gonna hold off for a minute. Meaning, hold off on not having four, I'm just gonna have two. Uh, I'll also talk about maybe maybe you don't raise your own pork or maybe you don't uh, you don't have a farmer that raises them that you buy. Maybe you're not purchasing your own pork via a local farmers. Like is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you can buy lard. Um, just make sure it's lard. It's not hydrogenated. Boy, I hate that word because I can never say it good. Um, I guess there's lard out there that is hydrogenated. You don't want that. Um, so if you're ordering lard online or if you're in the grocery store looking for it or whatever, just make sure you read the packaging, make sure it's not hydrogenated. This is something else we very commonly do. We cook with our cast iron every day. So every day oil gets applied to the cast iron after cleaning. After cleaning, we do a very thin uh, coat of the lard. I actually just put way more in there than I normally do. Okay, I actually just drained some of this back into here because I didn't want to use that much. All right, let's get some butter in here. Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. 
All right, we're gonna add some pepper. A little bit of our real salt. We are a real salt affiliate, so check the link in the description so you can order some, get a discount, 15% discount on the real salt if you order through our link. All right, now I usually, I usually go for broke yolk eggs. So after this is cooked a little bit, I will just pop the yolk. And that's how I eat them. Let's get this thing flipped. I find flipping is usually the best once it's cooked quite a bit, but oh yeah, we're gonna add a little bit more pepper on the back side of that. Oh, these are gonna be ready in about one second. I can't wait. All right, guys, here it is. Mmm, good stuff. I'm feeling kind of generous. I might share a little bit with the kids too here real quick. But hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hope this was helpful. Remember, you can just store your lard on the shelf. If you feel safer storing it in the freezer, there's nothing wrong with that either. Now, I'm gonna finish, <laughs> I fell off my fork. I'm gonna finish eating these eggs. And I got, a whole bunch of eyeballs staring at me right now wanting a bite of these awesome eggs. Let's give them some. You want some? Sure. Grace, I know you don't like the yolk. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Hey! So, <laughs> I'll give you the really big piece. Okay. <laughs> hey, oh yes. Coco. Those are yummy.